Hey guys, uh, here we go again, number three. Uh, so if you haven't watched the first two, watch them. Uh, there, I, first one I went over how we can lend our cryptos out, decentralized lending platforms. I, I looked at Aave and Compound briefly, about how we can basically lend our cryptos out and get interest in return. Uh, and then in the last one, the second video, I went over how we can lend our cryptos to decentralized exchanges. Uh, in effect, we can become the middlemen on these exchanges. So uh, users use these exchanges, make swaps, make trades. And since we're lending our cryptos to these exchanges, we get some of the fees from the users, which is amazing. We become the middleman. So watch those two, the huge ways that people make money in decentralized finance. Today, what I want to go over is something called staking and something called yield farming, which is a huge subject. And one of the kind of most, most interest has been in yield farming. It's a big buzz about it of late, but I'll go over it sort of briefly. So to start with, I'm going to look at this site, Olympus DAO for staking. Now, this isn't a recommendation to go and buy and invest in Olympus DAO. Really, everything's volatile. I'm not an investment advisor, not a financial advisor. I'm just an amateur. I'm just learning. So please do your own research. This is not kind of advice on what to invest in. But I have to show you sites because it's easier to show you to get a, a grasp on how it's done. So with this one. Uh, it says a decentralized reserve currency. They all have different uses, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click enter app here. And so here we are, okay? Now, the way I actually connect to this site is the same as how I connected to SushiSwap. Up here, we see connect wallet. There's MetaMask, I'm just gonna click and boom, I'm connected. I don't like have an account on this site. I didn't sign up, I don't have a username. I, I, don't, I didn't give it my email, there's no password. None of that, I have no account on this site. My account is via my, my MetaMask, which is my browser wallet. It's like my passport into all of these DeFi sites. I access them all in the same way. If you have a MetaMask, boom, you can use these sites. Nothing else is required. It's, it's really quite phenomenal. Anyhow, so what is this site here? So staking, what's it about? When you stake an asset, what you're basically saying is, I'm gonna lock my asset up uh, for a certain amount of time it can be for a certain amount of time it could be for a day a minute it could be a month you have to read each has its own requirements each site and as long as you lock your asset into their website they will give you interest all right really basic way of saying it so looking at this dashboard what have we got here so olympus here it says buy on sushi swap and there's a link so that we can buy the actual token because it's all about their token this is olympus dow and they made a token called the ohm token and if you want to stake on this site and earn interest because that's why we stake to earn more tokens or more money more value um, if you want to stake it you need the ohm token and here's a link to buying it on sushi swap here we have apy means annual percentage yield so it's the interest you will get in a year and it's including the effect of compounding compounding just means if whatever money i earn today i reinvest that and tomorrow's earnings will be off my initial amount plus the amount i made yesterday and we keep compounding it in this case every day it actually with this it compounds it every uh, roughly eight hours anyhow so the apy so the amount i'll have after a year if it keeps the same interest rate is thirty seven thousand four hundred and one percent thirty seven thousand four hundred one percent that's insane now obviously are these to be taken how seriously should i take that if i put in one dollar now will i have thirty seven thousand dollars at the end of the year highly highly unlikely possible possible i'll have more but really, these things are all, this is brand new. All right, all these sites are brand new. They're kind of experiments. They're more financial experiments than anything else. And if I, as a, if I approach them as though this is an experiment, all right, it could go completely to nothing. It really could go wrong. Or it could do fairly well. If I approach it as an experiment, it's kind of more realistic, you know. It's that risky. It's that volatile. This is, these are not safe in this traditional sense of the word, these are not really safe um, investments in the same way. This is all developing and they're all unusual and they're all doing new things. These guys are trying to create a reserve currency, a crypto reserve currency. Actually, it's a stable currency. They're trying to learn how to preserve value. Anyhow, so this APY, watch out for them. Don't always take them as like gospel at all, okay? So at the moment it says 37,401 APY, it's insane. TVL, total value locked. So this is the amount, $129,673,569. If you take all of the investment that's currently locked into this site, earning interest, 
that's how much it is, is $129,673,569 of people's money is currently invested in this site earning interest. So um, here you have stake and unstake. My balance, I don't have any ohm at the moment. My staked balance, I have no ohm staked either. Reward yield, 0.54%. Now it will give me 0.54% every roughly eight hours which is an amazing amount of yield. It's an amazing interest rate. So return on investment, the five day rate. So every five days that I have my, my uh, ohm staked, what do I earn? 8.4578%. It's a lot, it's a serious amount of money, serious amount of value to be returned because I get paid that back in the tokens. If I have one token, I'll get 8% of that back after five days now this is changing all the time it really is changing all the time so this is changing this is changing learn about it first if you're going to invest in these things down here you can find the docs there's their medium page yeah github here is medium here is their twitter and here is discord now discord is highly useful i don't know if you know i'm going to click on that this app discord here is an app it's a messaging app and many of these projects many of these crypto projects use discord so if you're going to get involved in DeFi, get discord and join everyone's discord it's either discord or telegram usually it's discord though um and and just go around in the discord and listen to what people are saying read ask questions discord's hugely useful in DeFi. so i'll get off that one what am i going to do here to show you how we would do this how we would stake it i'm not sure if i'll get to yield farming today because this is going to take a while but how to do it let's go over to sushi swap i'm going to buy some ohm token and i'm going to stake it and show you and we'll keep up with that over the the coming weeks I'll, I'll show you is this working we can sort of track the value of it so let's go to sushi swap so we were on sushi swap in the last video uh making an lp token liquidity provider token here here is the site sushi.com and i'm going to enter app and it's really simple to get to that we just go to the swap page and here we are eth now i've got some eth in my wallet we can see 0 0.429899 balance here i'm just going to go i'm going to search for the ohm token there it is olympus ohm I'm going to do, uh, how many ohms should we get? Let's get one ohm. It's quite a big investment. It's currently $308 for one ohm token. I'm going to do it so we can just track how this goes over the coming weeks. And you can see, is this sort of thing worth it? Because I can get more ohm, all right? So I can be earning more ohm interest. I have like 3.5 ohm or 1.5 ohm, let's say, in a while. But what if the ohm price has gone down or gone, gone up? We'll, we'll have a look at it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one ohm. I'm going to press swap here, confirm swap. My wallet will open. It's going to cost me $15 to make the swap. I'm going to confirm transaction submitted. So I've paid enough in fees that it's going to do the transaction quite quickly. Okay, so there we are. It's gone through. Uh, swap 0 0.147 ETH for one ohm. Okay, so if I go over here to my wallet, uh, here you can see the one ohm. Now I added this as a token to my wallet. So if you make this switch here, if you go to Sushi Swap and you make the switch and you don't see it in your wallet, you just need to add the token. You just need to find out how to add the token. I'll go over that in the next videos, but at the moment I don't want to complicate it. So I've swapped for my own. There it is. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to head straight back to the Olympus DAO page. Here we are, back on the Olympus DAO and my wallet's still connected. And now your balance, one ohm. Your staked balance is zero ohm. I haven't got any staked ohm, so I've only got my one ohm. So what do I do? Here we have stake and we have unstake. Really, they've tried to make this, it's still complicated, right? DeFi is going to get simpler as time goes on. But they've made it pretty simple. So here's stake. I'm going to type, I'm just going to put max. My max, I have that one ohm. I'm going to press approve. Oh, I have to confirm it's $3 to approve it so that, again, what's happening there is this, my wallet, is communicating with the Olympus DAO site and it's saying, uh, yes, this site here is allowed to spend my own. It's allowed to move it out of my wallet and do stuff. That's what the approval means, really. Okay, so this has now changed from approve to stake. Now, that did take a while. Actually, there was a bit of delay. It, stayed, it kept saying approve, and I had to refresh the site. There's still some kinks in the user interface, but I did refresh it, and now it says stake. So again, I'm going to go max. That's one ohm. I'm going to click stake, and that will should start the process. Here we are, $15.79 gas fee. Ethereum's still expensive, but I'm going to leave this in for like, I don't know, a year. So there we are. I'm going to press confirm. 
and that's it. That will start the process of me staking my um, ohm and earning interest. So let's have a look. Hold on a minute. What's happening with that? I'll just check. Okay, so that's gone through now. So I had to refresh the page again. It keeps glitching a little bit, but I had to refresh it again. And now your balance of ohm is zero because your staked balance is one. I now have one ohm staked. So we'll continue. We'll catch up with this uh, over the coming kind of videos and stuff and just see how that's doing. So staked really means that it's not available in my wallet anymore. It's staked. It's locked into this site. That's really what staking is all about. We take a token. Now it can be an LP token like we made in the last video. We stake that. We're gonna see that in yield farming in the next part. But very often with staking, it's a single asset. It can also be a single asset. We take our asset, we come to the, a, a website where staking of that asset is allowed. And what we say to the website, it'll have a place where we can stake it and approve it. And we lock that asset up. And as long as we leave it there locked, um, we will be given rewards, we will be given interest. Sometimes as a reward, we will get a different token. So for instance, I might stake Ohm and get, I don't know, ETH as a reward. That does, I've never seen that one. But sometimes your rewards are in a different token from the one you staked. It can, there are various different things happening all over the place. So uh, single staking, this sort of thing where you have one asset and you stake one asset, um, it can often be seen as less risky. It's quite attractive to people because it's less risky in certain ways than providing LP. Remember in the last video, I talked about how when we provide an LP token, it's always uh, two, it's always a crypto pair, two assets in the one LP. And if the price of those assets ever changes too much, uh, you can suffer from something called impermanent loss. And it can be a real risk so that when you go and unbind, you want to get rid of your LP and get your cryptos back and your, your fees, you can have lost a lot of money because of impermanent loss. I'll go over that impermanent loss in another one, a better explanation. But with this, with single staking an asset, you're not exposed to that same risk of impermanent loss. Um, the asset that you're staking can go up and down in value. Um, but it's still one asset. The, the idea of impermanent loss, which is such a big concern when it comes to liquidity provision and yield farming, it's also a concern, that's not there with single staking. That particular risk is not there. There are other risks, all right? The people who run Olympus could still run off with all the money, you know, or, or the Olympus token here, I can go to CoinGecko and I can look at the Olympus token. It's down 7.9% today. It's down 19.7% compared to Ethereum today. So these things, these assets are still very volatile. If I look at the price chart here, let's go to um, the max price chart. So how far does it even go back? It goes back the price chart to um, the 24th of March, April, May, June. This is three months old. Okay, these are very new things. And we can see the price. The price was at one point was up at 1,415. Huge. And now it's down where? Now it's down at 306. It seems to have stabilized, but who knows what will happen. So there are still risks with all these things. Even having one asset, there's a risk. But some of the risks which are, are there with um, providing LP tokens are not there with single-sided staking. There's various other things you've got to watch out for when it comes to all of these DeFi protocols. As time goes on, some of them are finding more ways to sort of take extra bits of fees. So they might say, this one doesn't, but they might say, all right, when you lock it up, you have to lock it up for a month. Now that's a risk. Because if you lock it up for a month, it means if the price is tanking and you're watching it go down, 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 then you can't just sort of take your stake out and take your money back and convert it. You can't do that. So you're forced to sort of either um, watch the, the value of your asset fall or maybe you withdraw it before the month is over or where at whatever time they specify. And maybe there's a penalty for withdrawing it early or maybe a standard when you stake, they take 3%. Or when you unstake, they take 3%. There are all these little things in the fine print. When you go to these DeFi protocols, when I go to them, I've learned to read. Read. Because as time goes on, some of them are getting shiftier and shiftier and finding new ways to take bits of um, money off people. Now, the ones which are kind of reputable, they're not going to do that. They're in this for the long term and they, they want people to invest in their ecosystem. For instance, Olympus has, you know, go to Discord and, and get involved in the Olympus uh, uh, 
Discord community, you'll see that people really want to. Now, this isn't, again, isn't financial advice, but you'll see that some of these protocols, some of these DeFi sites really want long-term engagement. It's an experiment. It's all still an experiment, but it's one they believe in and they invest in personally with their time and effort. There are other ones which really, they're just there to rob money. They're just there. You'll, I'll show you when it comes to the yield farming and stuff. Certain ones just because a lot of this stuff is, is open source. So they make their protocol, their code available to people. Other people can just copy it and start their own version and have really not very good intentions by doing that. You know, they can just gather lots of money and then disappear. So you, it's really good to check. I've learned to really check what's the community like? You know, have they got lots of documentation on Medium? What's their long-term strategy? How much thought has really gone into this? Have they just stolen someone else's idea? What's the community like? Because generally, when there's a community, there are some communities which consist of thousands of people just going, yeah, let's go to the moon, let's go to the moon. And it's kind of stupid. You see it, you listen to the community and you think, okay, these guys... I don't know if I trust these guys. Sometimes they're doing it for fun and they're just having fun in there. But you can tell the difference. Other communities you'll go and they're talking about economics and they're talking about how we can make the protocol better and they're talking about marketing and they're talking about incentivization and they'll say, uh, you know, incredible things like, shall we lower the APY to keep our, our protocol healthy? You'll hear people, you know, taking a financial hit in the short term, trying to make it long term more sustainable. So. I've learned to pay quite a lot of attention to the communities around these protocols and do some investigation first, you know. Don't take my word for it and just invest in this. Really research first. And any investment in this, you know how they sometimes say only spend the money, only invest money you can afford to lose. And oh, that sounds very clever. Like we can't really afford to lose any money. And we don't invest to lose money. We invest to make money. But with this stuff, with DeFi, with things like this, I'd say that's good advice. I would say don't invest any money that you can't afford to lose because these things are experiments. You go in the Discord and you'll hear them talking about how this is a financial experiment. One they believe in, well, these people will believe in it, but it's still an experiment. So around this stuff, all of DeFi, I would say if it was people I loved, don't, do not, um, invest money. Do not risk money you cannot afford to lose because I've lost money in this and I've seen a lot of people lose money in this stuff. All right, that sounds very negative, but it's really, it's really, uh, it's serious. These, these are experiments. They're building a whole, trying to build a whole new financial system basically here and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, so I think I will leave that. I've gone on for a bit. I said I'd go on to yield farming. So in the next one, we'll look at this. Bow Finance, really the first of the farms that I came across. Um, they're building something great. It's a really interesting one to look at because there are so many farms which have opened up and they're just kind of based on nothing and going nowhere and they're all a bit, ah. Whereas Bow Finance, really I got into it because of, you know, uh, sometimes people ask, well, how are they giving us these cryptos? What are we doing? Just getting free money? No, and it's really interesting why they're giving us the, their token, the BAO governance token, uh, and how this all works. It's really interesting, and I'll go over that in the next one. So thanks for watching. Sorry I didn't get to the yield farming, but I'm trying to keep them a bit shorter, and I sort of went on again there. So anyhow, see you in the next one.